Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. Today's video is going to be on a goddess from Greek legends who will be known by a few mythology fans, but is often overlooked by those who do not know much about mythology and classics. I think she's a very fascinating and interesting goddess who should be discussed more often. Her name was Amphitryte. I hope you enjoy it. So Amphitryte was the eldest of the 50 Nereids, also known as Senims, whose parents were Nereus, the old man of the sea, and the Oceanid daughter of Oceanus and Tethys, whose name was Doris. In some other tellings of her tale, Amphitryte was actually an Oceanid and the sister of Doris, but she is mostly viewed as a Nereid. The story of Amphitryte begins on the island of Naxos, where the princess Ariadne was left by the hero Theseus and found by Dionysus, whilst the god of the sea, Poseidon, is searching for a wife. The fifty Nereids were dancing on the shore of Naxos as Poseidon arrived, and from a great distance he took a very strong liking to Amphitryte because of her great beauty and skilful dancing. Poseidon approached the Nereids, who all bowed in respect and gazed longingly after the god, as they all wanted to be his queen and help him rule the ocean and all of its inhabitants. The least interested was Amphitryte, and when I say the least interested, I mean she had no interest at all. He walked over to Amphitryte and requested her hand in marriage. When she refused and Poseidon grew angry with her and fearing what he would do, as she knew of his previous attacks on Medusa and Demeter, Amphitryte jumped into the ocean and swam away. It was said that Amphitryte fled to the end of the earth where Atlas stood holding up the world or sometimes the sky dependent on what read you myth. Either way, it was his punishment for going against the gods in the Titanomachy. It is not explained why she went to Atlas, but if he had not yet been petrified by the gaze of Medusa at the hand of Perseus, she may have believed that he still scared Poseidon and that the god would not pursue her further. Amphitryte was left alone for a few days near Atlas, until the dolphin god, Delphin, arrived on the shores. The god presen presented Amphitryte with gifts from Poseidon, and told her all of the opportunities she would have if she became his queen. She took some convincing, but eventually Amphitryte agreed to return, and so Delphin led her back to Poseidon, where he thanked Delphin by making a dolphin constellation called Delphinus, which is the Roman word for dolphin. Poseidon and Amphitryte married, and she became queen of the ocean. In many works of art, Amphitryte is represented either enthroned beside Poseidon, or driving with him in a chariot drawn by sea creatures, which highlights her importance. She was often depicted in paintings as a beautiful woman, often raising her hand in a pinching gesture, a bit like a crab, and sometimes she was shown holding a fish. Occasionally, her hair is enclosed with a net and her brow is adorned with a pair of crab claws, which sometimes look a bit like horns. Together, Poseidon and Amphitryte had a child called Triton, who, according to the Greek poet Hesiod, dwelt with his parents in a golden palace in the depths of the sea. Sometimes he was not particularised, but was one of many Tritons, but his name means of the third in Greek, and Amphitryte's name is derived from the Greek words Amphis and Tris, which means the surrounding third. In modern day, we could translate the word third as meaning the sea, which would mean Triton's name means of the sea, and Amphitryte means the surrounding sea. I think it's fair to say that Poseidon went through a lot of effort to convince Amphitryte to marry him, and Amphitryte copes with a lot, being terrified as he pursues her. So here is the bit in this myth that, quite frankly, baffles me. After Poseidon went through all of that just to marry her, he cheats on her with other goddesses, such as Aphrodite and Demeter, and also many mortals, and has more children by the names of Theseus, Polyphemus, Orion, Belus, Agenor, Neleus, Atlas, who was the first king of Atlantis, Pegasus, and Chrysaor. This is why, in modern day, Hades is viewed by those who look deeply into the myths as the best of the three brothers, because he, although forces Persephone to marry him, does not cheat on her once they are married and remains loyal. Unlike Poseidon, who, as we've seen, basically bribes Amphitryte into marriage and still was unfaithful, 
and Zeus, who is the worst of the three, who is never satisfied no matter how many women he got with. As you would, Amphitrite got very angry about this, when Poseidon tried to seduce the scene in Priscilla. When she heard about this, Amphitrite threw some of the herbs into a pool and turned Scylla into a sea monster with 12 heads and dogs around her waist, and also gave her tentacles, so that no man would ever love her again. This myth is often interchanged with the love triangle between Scylla, Glaucus and Circe, which I mentioned in detail in my Circe video. In most myths and legends, Amphitrite is known as the loud moaning mother of fish, seals and dolphins. She is essentially the same goddess as Thalassa, or Thalassa, who was the primordial goddess of the sea in Greek religion. So when the Romans basically copied the Greek gods but changed their names, they morphed those two together and made the wife of Neptune, whose name was Salatia, which means salty one, and she remained goddess of salt water. And they are the basics on Amphitrite, the wife of Poseidon and queen of the ocean. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like, comment or subscribe. If you know anyone with an interest in Greek, Roman or Norse mythology or Arthurian legends, then please let them know about my channel and the current playlists. And if any of them work with or have children, then please let them know about my mini myths playlist aimed towards kids. This video will be joining my others on Greek myth in the Greek mythology manifest playlist. And I hope to soon add some videos about Egyptian, Celtic, Mesopotamian and other mythologies from around the world. In this video I mentioned Circe, Scylla and Medusa and I've done videos on these mythological characters so please feel free to check those out if you would like to. If you would also like to you could follow my channel's Twitter account at the mythology MA1. There is a link to that in the description below and on there I post almost daily with mythological facts and information on my next videos. Thank you for helping me keep classics alive. I will see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.